Well, what do you make of what you're hearing and what is that figure? Headline figure looks ghastly. It really does, up to 9.4%. But as, as you guys said, it's only food and fuel. There were actually some downward contributions from things like recreation and culture. Clothing was a downward contribution. What do you mean by recreational culture? Like yeah, recreation and culture, and what do you mean? absolutely. Or right. uh, video games. But they have to compete to stay relevant because they're a luxury option. Yeah, but, and, the, and they're also they're, they're quite volatile, those. Uh, but they were a downward contribution this month. And so the, I think the important thing here is that this isn't pervasive inflation. It, it's not good news necessarily because food and fuel are things that we absolutely have to buy. But unlike in the U.S., we're not seeing inflation go beyond food and fuel. We're not seeing it go to every other area of the economy. It's because, so, because, Laurie, I would say in real life, people say, right, I have to fill up my car. I have to pay well, my heating bills. I have to Look, you're absolutely right. But I don't have to watch my streaming service, whatever that streaming service may be. Absolutely. And, and, and it's still scary. These are non-discretionary items. You cannot not buy food. Um, so it is a little bit scary there. But we're not seeing inflation go across the wider economy, which I think will be very helpful for the Bank of England. This, this is not as scary a number as perhaps people were fearing. Well, that's what we like to hear. Definitely. Um, I suppose <laughs> yes, because I always bring you very bad you news. Do. So it's sort of not as awful as <laughs> it's not as It's awful, <laughs> but we're looking at grades. Let, let's talk about context in all of this then, because we've been talking this morning about um, pay keeping in line well, with inflation. And we've also been talking about the leadership contest and how the, the landscape looks in the future. So give us a sense of how that all plays out. OK, where do we start? Should we start on pay or should we start on the leadership? Um, on because, pay. I, uh, because this is absolutely fascinating. We got the results of the independent review of, of, of public sector pay yesterday. Most pay rises are between four and five percent. Some lower paid workers will get raises of, of up to nine percent, but that's a very, very small portion of them. So there is a proper grievance here, isn't there? People saying, you know, we are public sector workers. Inflation's at nine percent. You're going to give me a pay rise of five percent. In real terms, I'm taking a pay cut. There is a, a real grievance here. I think for the next party leader, uh, party leader, next prime minister, this is going to be a big deal. Do you bump up public sector pay? Now, the argument argument is we're not going to do that because if wages rise, inflation will rise further. And that's been the inflation model for the past 40 years. Mm. Things are different now, mostly because people are less unionized. The workforce is less unionized. The public sector is only 18 percent of, of employment. So it, you don't have that wage price cycle that we have seen in years previous.